back to America. The Jesuit order, they set their own president in every country. They also create democracy and United Nations, how they can finish the new world order. And if your president don't submit to their rules and give their power to them, they will pretend like you have a new weapons and they will take you, they will set another president that will submit to their rules so that they can finish the new world order. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. When a Catholic Jesuit learn Sunday churches, their doctrine, and the Vatican II, when they infiltrate their churches, and they draw all their churches to so-called the mother of the church, because they know their doctrine, and they can answer questions and preach so the members of the Sunday churches, they think that all the pastors are faithful pastors. So now it's all about my pastor says, my pastor says, my pastor says. And this is the crying that a lot of times you hear from them. Instead of them to study, to show thyself approved, just like Bible says, they're making the flesh their right arm. And some of them, when they learn the Sabbath truth, that is always Saturday because their pastors has been hematized them for so many years. So when they go and they talk to their pastors, instead of them to talk to God and make decision based on that says the Lord, they make their pastors make decision for them because that's how bad they hematize them. And now because they control every president in every country, they a new world order. So now they using the president to sign up laws and all kinds of rules like gay and lesbian. And now they don't want you to talk about Bible. You know, if you go to work, they don't want you to talk about Christ because, you know, they say it's offended. They try to put the whole world in darkness. They don't want people to know the truth just like what they did in dark ages. They remove Bible from people and they put people in darkness so that they can control them. That's what they're doing again. Notice what Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 to 12. And do this knowing the time that now is a high time to awake out of sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the walk of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The time you have spent to study Bible a year, now you have to do it a couple of months. It's time to pray more and talk less. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming for the church without spot or wrinkle. Watch this. When Nazi Germany attacked Britain in 1940, Winston Churchill called on his people to defend Christian civilization. Today, there is a new kind of battle in Britain, and Christianity is again at stake. Dale Hurd reports from London. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Like British monarchs before her, she promised to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel. But Britain today is at war with the gospel and with itself. Christians who try to be Christians in the workplace risk being demoted or fired, and the government continues to push an aggressive gay rights agenda while threatening to criminalize Christian speech and practice. Christian politician and activist George Hargraves. Yesterday, I got a letter from the Advertising Standards Authority of a complaint saying that my billboard that says Britain is a Christian country is offensive to atheists and other religions and it incites hatred against them. What nonsense. Britain is constituted as a Christian country. Daily prayers are said in Parliament, whether atheists like it or not. The Queen is the head of the Church of England and therefore has to acknowledge God for her sovereignty over the nation. These things are written into, not just our culture and our heritage, but into our constitution. Great Britain is officially a Christian nation, and in fact at one time was the missionary base for the entire world, even sending missionaries to the new American colonies. But Britain today in practice is increasingly anti-Christian, and the cases of anti-Christian bigotry and discrimination are beginning to pile up. In response, Christian legal centers have mobilized. Lawyer Andrea Minicello-Williams of Christian Concern for Our Nation 
warns that if British Christians don't step up now, Britain is on a path to criminalize the practice of Christianity in public. There's been a massive move by the secularist lobby to privatize religion. You can have faith so long as it doesn't affect you in the workplace, so long as you don't bring it into the workplace. Just make it private. It can't be public. It can't affect what you do in the public square. Christian Quabena Pete was forced to attend homosexual sensitivity training at work, administered by a lesbian. One of the things that she said was when she asked the question, what makes you all think that to be heterosexual is natural? At which point I walked out. He then wrote a letter to the sensitivity trainer explaining the Bible's position on homosexuality and that God loved her and he loved her. He was suspended. They said that by me telling them about the word of God, it's constituted harassment and intimidation. Quabena was just recently reinstated. Cases like Quabena's are repeated over and over in Britain. Doctors, nurses, adoptive parents deemed unfit because of their Christian beliefs. Christians are told not to speak about God in the workplace, or they're punished for offending homosexuals or Muslims. Now the British government wants to pass a new equality bill that would force churches to hire practicing homosexuals or transsexuals. Christian lawyer Paul Diamond has been very successful in fighting Christian discrimination cases in the courts. In the United Kingdom, the homosexual agenda is militants, and they've been arresting Christians, jailing Christians for hate crimes, shutting off grants, constant litigation with the government, constant aggression, there's no live and let live. Your Christian values are wicked and evil, and that's what they want everybody to believe. That sounds like a BBC program which portrayed a violent Christian beheading a Muslim. Britain's government TV has also put a Muslim in charge of all of its religious programming. Islam continues to advance in the UK in large part because the government and media give it almost a protected status, while essentially persecuting its own state religion, Christianity. Many believe the architect of Britain's new anti-Christian culture was former Prime Minister Tony Blair, who championed gay rights. And during our interviews with Minicello, Williams and Diamond, they both offered the same warning to American Christians, that any anti-life or hate crimes legislation under the Obama administration will erode America's Christian base. This is all coming to America if you liberalize the laws as President Obama has done. You know who Obama reminds every British person of? Tony Blair. Charming, persuasive, convincing, um, appearance of moderation, and then shoved all the Judeo-Christian values down, saying he was a Christian as he did it. So we know what's going to happen in America. We know what's going to happen to your 40% church attendance. It isn't 40%, it's going to be 20%. When the, when the federal and state government start saying, if you criticize homosexuality, the hate crime laws will apply to you Christians. Dale Hurd, CBN News, London. No one needs say that his case is hopeless, that he can't live the life of a Christian. Ample provision is made by the death of Christ for every soul. Jesus is our ever-present help in time of need. Only call upon him in faith, and he has promised to hear and answer your petitions. Oh, for living active faith. We need it. We must have it, or we shall fade and fail in the day of trial. The darkness that will then rest upon our path must not discourage us or drive us to despair. It is now that we must keep ourselves and our children unspotted from the world. It is now that we must wash our robes of character and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. It is now that we must overcome pride, passion, and spiritual slothfulness. It is now that we must awake and make determined effort for symmetry of character. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We are in a most trying position, waiting, watching for our Lord's appearing. The world is in darkness. But ye brethren, says Paul, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you. What are you doing, brethren, in the great work of preparation? Those who are uniting with the world are receiving the worldly mold and preparing for the mark of the beast. Those who are distrustful of self, who are humbling themselves before God and purifying their souls by obeying the truth, these are receiving the heavenly mold and preparing for the seal of God in their foreheads. 
Now is the time to prepare. The seal of God will never be placed upon the forehead of an impure man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious, world-loving man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of men or women of false tongues or deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal must be without spot before God, candidates for heaven. Search the scriptures for yourselves that you may understand the fearful solemnity of the present hour. Friends, don't let the devil use hypnosis preachers, whether as the pastor or whoever they are, to tell you that you're not going to be holy. You're going to sin until Jesus Christ come. That's doctrines of the devils. When God says, be you holy, because I'm a holy. When Jesus Christ sets you free, Bible says, ye shall be free indeed. If you think that God is bigger than the devil, then you're going to be holy by the grace of God. 